Select the appropriate mask agents for this mission. Personnel selected. Michael Mercy, 80s nostalgia expert. Collection code name, 80s Toy Museum. agents everyone gather around because it's time for another patreon special missions request where's mask right here thanks to michael Choi's patreon special missions request for the 1985 mask headquarters which came in this humongous box while other toy lines in the 80s waited until their second year or even further down the line to release a big playset, mask exploded right out of the gate in their initial year with not only an awesome lineup of vehicles, but a giant service station that served as the mask home base. And also unlike some other playsets from the 80s, the toy version looked exactly like the one on the show. And speaking of firsts, Boulder Hill was the first thing you saw on the mask animated series as the classic theme songs opening notes played. greatest 80s animated theme song, by the way. And what better base for a bunch of cars and trucks than a gas station? On the animated series, Matt Tracker's mansion connected directly to Boulder Hill through a secret underground tunnel. Mask headquarters. Making it his home not far away from home. And also unlike many of the other 80s playsets, this base came with not just one figure, but two. They've only got a skeleton crew up there. Oh, come on, that's plenty compared to Grayskull, G.I. Joe HQ, the Thundercats Lair, Castle of Lions, Fright Zone, and Sectar's Hive, all of which came with zero figures. There he goes again, Matt. Not making any sense. Makes plenty of sense, buddy. Thanks, Matt. One figure fit right in as a gas station attendant and mechanic. Buddy Hawks, master of disguise, intelligence expert, firecracker, co-pilot. Codename Clutch. Oh, put a sock in it already, will you? I guess Hasbro and Kenner weren't too concerned with trademark overlapping back then. When Matt Tracker assembled the mask agents for a top secret mission, Buddy never had to travel too far to get to the energy room. On the show, Buddy split his time between driving or co-piloting Hondo McLean's firecracker truck and working on cars at Boulder Hill. Buddy, I'll be needing you. Yeah, to detail his Bentley. This guy's attitude really grabbed me, Matt. Buddy Hawks included <sighs> the penetrator mask. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, behave. In hindsight, it may have been better to use the original working title for Buddy's Mask, which was called Bodyguard. I could have come up with that. Unlike most mask powers, Penetrator didn't have the power to make the wearer, or other things, levitate or fly. Very unsporting of him, I must say! What? Oh, shut up. There's enough levitating gimmicks in Mask already. Buddy's Mask actually had a really cool power. It could allow him to walk through solid matter like walls. Penetrator on! Or allow matter to pass through him, like oncoming projectiles. Why dodge bullets when you can just let them go through you? Stiletto fire! Penetrator on! The other figure included with the Boulder Hill playset was a bit more sophisticated. What's that mean? Nothing. Just saying this guy wasn't who you'd picture pumping gas or working on an engine. Alex Sector, computer and communications expert, Rhino Systems Commander. Codename Megabyte. On the show, he was usually operating Rhino's weapon systems, a big rig being also an unlikely match for such a fancy pants dandy. Hold on there, old chum. Oh, come on. Aren't people who use the phrase old chum fancy pants dandies? Indeed they are, old chap. Exactly. Alex's mask was named Jackrabbit. And guess what it could do? Jackrabbit? On! Yep, another floater, so to speak. 
The figures were nice bonuses, but the real magic is in this unsuspecting gas station, which was the target of only two Venom attacks in the entire animated series run. Episode 3, The Book of Power, and Episode 54, Fog on Boulder Hill. Well, they wouldn't have come all that way to attack a gas station. That's right, buddy. This is no ordinary gas station. The signal is coming from inside the mountain. Whenever the early warning system detected venom on the sensors... Code red. Enemy approaching mask headquarters. What's happening? Boulder Hill could transform. <laughs> Much like Brave Star's Fort Carrium. Only, again, much more accurate to the toy when it did so on the show. Regardless of what Venom threw at Boulder Hill, We'll be ready. The store part of the base could flip down revealing an armored pillbox that could keep out Venom agents, as well as other nuisances. Let me in! Thanks to a solid steel wall that even a lightsaber couldn't slice through. This defensive wall also featured a swiveling anti-gravity howitzer. Another floater! Pulling this lever deployed the breakthrough bunker wall, which had a swing open gate for your mask vehicles to burst through. Hey, that kind of reminds me of another famous 80s vehicle bursting through a gate. Gas station pumps could transform into defense lasers, which could be aimed from inside the base, like the anti-grav gun. And it could also generate an impenetrable force field. Deploy electronic force field. <laughs> force field! Can you bring me the hose? Ah, you noticed. Yes, Boulder Hill did originally include a pair of hoses for the pumps. Missing these hoses doesn't impede the play feature, though. In other words, quite stunningly unimportant. Yeah, they're just for show. The sign could also pop open and lay down a suppressing fire. As well as... Guess what? Make things levitate, right? It probably is. Yeah, need to squeeze that in there. This gun, like all the others, could be aimed remotely by turning it at the base of the sign. And finally for weaponry, what I call the Philosophical Blaster Cannon. Here's something deep for them to think about! By moving a lever on the back, the mounted cannon would pop up, which would launch the boulder, tumbling down to squash any hapless Venom agent in the way. Buddy didn't have to worry about oncoming boulders, though. Penetrator on! You could also use it to keep your He-Man figure in shape. <clears throat> the cannon could also be aimed from inside the mountain. Love how all these weapons can be aimed in a puppeteering fashion with your hand hidden from view inside the base. There was also a helipad where you could land Condor. And near the edge was... A trap door! which could drop Venom agents down into Boulder Hill's detention cell. Because of Mask's 124th scale, it's unfortunately not compatible with Hasbro's Cops and Crooks figures. Well, not comfortably anyways. The cell featured a bunch of computer command panel stickers. I guess this was the computer that Matt was talking to when selecting the best Mask agents for this mission. Despite being jam-packed with features which were faithfully represented on the show, there were three glaring omissions that the base featured on the show that the toy didn't have. The Energy Room Roundtable. Prepare to energize masks. Where mask agents assembled and masked up for their missions. Although there are some amazing fan customs out there that take care of this unfinished business. The Fog Dispenser. To shroud the base during attacks, which is easily remedied with a simple Halloween fog machine, and the soda launcher.
Wouldn't be much use against the Dreadnoughts though if it was stocked with grape soda. In addition to all the fun play features, Boulder Hill had some great sculpting details. Really nice sculpting on the hill part, complete with a little ladder. Great for your mountaineering figures. Fantastic detailing on the inside of various tools and other tech stuff. Plus huge window stickers and a working garage door in the gas station mode. It's one of the best playsets of the 80s, perfectly integrating the vehicles of the toy line. And certainly some of the most bang for your buck. $32.95? You've got to be kidding me. If you're a mask fan, it's a must have. What truck station is complete without trucks? And how awesome does Rhino look parked on it? As well as Thunderhawk and all the rest. Quite right. It's a grand slam home run of a playset. Lots of fun features to futz with and two different modes to keep it perpetually fresh on your shelf. Despite its age, it also still feels really sturdy. No sticky, breaking down plastic like Masters of the Universe, or brittle, fragile feeling plastic like vintage G.I. Joe. They were telling the truth, Kenner really did care. And they made toys that seemed to be holding up better than some of the competitors of the 80s that outlasted them. Righto. I think Alex speaks for all of us Kenner kids. I really do appreciate it. Good work, Alex. And I appreciate your request, Michael. Thanks for being a member of the Patreon tribe. And thanks to the entire Patreon tribe for being the guzzoline in this big rigs engine. And I also want to give a shout out to mask.fandom.com for their plethora of mask material. Got a Boulder Hill memory you'd like to share? Drop a thought in the comments spot. Tap the bell for the intel on when new videos are released. And to join the tribe, levitate, subscribe. Nerd Mistake, on!